This is a raid on a moonshine still operating in the southern part of the United States. In eastern Tennessee, they are at it again. Did you ever think you would be a moonshiner, Louise? No. <laughs> Stamping out such illegal activity is difficult and dangerous work. But nowadays, the feds are encouraging this activity with a 2007 law, the Renewable Fuel Standard, which mandates a certain amount of the nation's fuel supply comes from renewable sources, like ethanol. We uh, extract the sugars from a cellulose, and then we, uh, once the sugars are out, we ferment the material. Once the material is fermented and in solution with water, we move it into the distillation area. People in East Tennessee say they've been making ethanol for a long time up in the hills and, and essentially we're doing a similar type of process. Steve Mershak is with a very old company, DuPont, helping to develop a very new industry, cellulosic ethanol, liquid fuel made from plants containing cellulose, which in turn contain the sugars necessary to produce ethanol. And this demonstration plant in Venora, Tennessee is helping to pave the way. The mission of Vinor is to demonstrate the technology required to convert corn stover and switchgrass into ethanol and to generate the basic data that we need to design and engineer a full-scale commercial facility. And that commercial plant will soon be a reality in Nevada, Iowa, where DuPont is building a facility to turn out 30 million gallons of cellulosic ethanol a year compared to only 250,000 here at the pilot plant in Tennessee. This is feedstock that we use uh, to run the process. This one, I believe, is uh, switchgrass. Though corn ethanol production has been around for several decades, this next generation of cellulosic renewable crops like switchgrass or corn stover is in its infancy, and the industry is just learning to walk developing the infrastructure and the supply chain from farm to the gas pump. Just for perspective, I think it's important to keep in mind that we have had a hundred years or more to develop the oil-based fuel infrastructure that we have today. And this whole cellulosic biofuels industry, the R&D started a couple of decades ago, but the real thrust has only been the last few years. Kelly Tiller and her company, Genera Energy, have partnered with DuPont to create a model for future cellulosic ethanol operations. Genera's role is working with nearby farmers to figure out the best systems for growing, harvesting, transporting, and storing the material. Like most things, the devil is in the details. We do a lot of work here focusing on how to best store, what are the best practices, uh, what factors influence that quality, how do we manage moisture over time. And do I put it on gravel, do I put it on dirt, if I put it on soil then does it wick up and wreck my bottom row, if I put it on rock do I avoid that, and all those questions have to be answered. About 900 miles from Venor, Tennessee, Andy Subi at Iowa State University is trying to answer the same kinds of questions. But in this part of the country, the primary biomass is corn stover, the leftover stalks and cobs left in the field after corn is harvested. Can you ever think of a time that's more exciting to be in agriculture? Because we're on the edge. I mean, this is a chemical revolution that's coming, and uh, we're right on the edge. And like the petrochemical industry, fuel is not the only product that can be created. It's just that these products are coming from a cleaner and renewable resource. It's not just about the fuel. It is about fuel, but it's about the chemicals too. This is what you make with biomass feedstocks. This is fuels, this is chemicals and other products, value-added products. And so be in the market that you need to be in at the profit that makes the most sense. If this fledgling industry is to grow up and fulfill its promise of energy independence, it says it needs the policy stability of the renewable fuel standard, a hotly debated topic in Washington these days. Just like oil and everything else, uh, you know, oil gets a subsidy through tax credits and things like that. But if you want to grow an industry that is baby industry and it's not profitable within two year ROI, you got to bump it a little bit, right? But then you, the whole point is to get it to that profitability so private industry can take it and go. And that's the whole idea behind it. Corn stover here in the Midwest, down south maybe it's switchgrass, and in the Northwest perhaps wood waste would work best. But cellulose is the most abundant organic material on earth. 
and it's renewable and clean. And though cellulosic ethanol doesn't have to worry about the IRS, there are the challenging economic and political realities of building a complex industry from scratch.